This conference will now be recorded. So first of all, some organizational issues. Uh, once again, thanks for joining this meeting. Approximately, we would like to keep this meeting to uh, 60 minutes. In the first part, I will introduce to you the Flexi Transfer Horizon 2020 project. And then in the second part, uh, colleagues will give you a demonstration of the market platform that will be used during this demonstration. We have organized this meeting uh, in order to give you as many information as possible. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask. But uh, due to the large number of participants in this call, I would like you to use the chat window of Google Meeting. And at the end of the two presentations, we will try to address all issues and all questions that were raised in the chat window. So no information will be uh, left. First of all, let me introduce myself. My name is Balint Hartmann. I am representing Budapest University of Technology and Economics. And I am responsible for leading World Package 9 and this demonstration of the Selexi Transfer project. And today, my colleagues in the presentation will be Nikolaus Belidis and Kostas Vasilakis, both from European Dynamics. European Dynamics is leading the consortium of the Flexi Transfer project, and they are responsible for the development of the market platform that we will introduce you today. A few words on the agenda. As you can see, we will start with a general introduction of the project. I will try to keep this short, and then we will move on to work package nine, show you first the most important objectives and the idea of this demonstration that was in our mind when we first submitted our proposal to the European Commission. And then finally, we will reveal the market platform and uh, tell you a few things about the demonstration that is to be conducted in the following months of the project. So first, a few words about the project. This proposal has been submitted to the LCA 04 call in uh, 2017, which was focusing on the demonstration of system integration with smart transmission grid and storage technologies with increasing share of renewables. And our submitted proposal was entitled FlexiTranStore, which uh, was an acronym for the Integrated Platform for Increased Flexibility in Transmission System, Storage Entities, and Large Penetration of Renewable Energies. So as you can see, this is a consortium that deals with a very wide number of technical and market issues related to the future of transmission systems, and uh, especially storage and renewables are two topics that are highlighted, and you can see this and the effect of this choice also in the market demonstration. Our proposal had an excellent review uh, from the European Commission and was granted uh, with 70 million euro which has been uh, added up for the cumulative total budget of the project, which is uh, almost 22 million euros. And as you can see, we're in the second phase already of this whole project. We were starting in November 2017, and we plan to end the project in the autumn of next year. A general structure was that the first two years were focusing mostly on the R&D activities, while from year three, uh, mostly the demonstrators were started and they are ongoing yet. So we're really in the phase of demonstrating all the technologies and all the solutions that have been developed in the first two years of the project. Some words about the objectives of the proposal that we have prepared. Of course, uh, we would try to aligning to the aims of the European Commission. So on one hand, we would like to enhance and accelerate the integration of renewables into the European power system. And also, we wanted to show tools with which we can increase the cross-border electricity flows around Europe. This has led to our strategic objectives. These objectives have been declared on both technical and both market level. For the technical level, the most important thing that the project is undertaking is to develop this Thing what we call the flexible energy grid, PEG, the new generation of this uh, European system, this European power system. And also, since the power system is nothing without an operating and liquid market, on the market level, we have set 
the strategic objective to develop and introduce a wholesale market infrastructure that would be able to support all the technical solutions and all the policies that are aiming to enhance the integration of renewables into Europe and of course to foster the trading between uh, countries in Europe. The consortium consists of 26 partners. You can see here on this slide. We have a very rich consortium. Uh, the leader, as I have mentioned, is European Dynamics, the technical coordinator of this consortium. We have a number of renowned universities and research centers on board. We have a large number of European transmission system operators on board. And we also have a number of private ventures and technology providers, which gives us a rich, very valuable uh, combination of partners on board. Work Package 9 and the demonstration that we're talking today is led by Budapest University of Technology and Economics, and it involves approximately 11 partners after this 26. So a very large share of the consortium is represented in the work, what you're going to see today. The Flexi Transport project was aiming to be set around eight demonstrations, which are going to be conducted, or actually are already being conducted in six countries. And uh, from a perspective of organizing them, we have defined three different layers at the beginning of the project. Layer one is focusing on the flexibility at the transmission connection points, which could be both production and demand. Layer two is focusing on the increasing of the cross-border capacity and the clean energy flows. And layer three is focusing on the flexibility entering the market. So two layers on the technical side and one layer on the market side of this uh, whole project. And in this side, you can see the total eight demonstrators and highlighted of them is demonstration number five. This is the wholesale market demonstration and clearing which we're focusing on today. You can also see the participating countries. These are very well spread around Europe. And this specific demonstration is going to be conducted in Bulgaria and Cyprus. I will now move on to Work Package 9 and uh, tell you a few things about how we developed the infrastructure and what were the main ideas and drivers of this Work Package by this time we have uh, submitted the proposal to the European Commission. First of all, uh, we have a common knowledge of how the markets are operating, especially how they are operating in Europe. And it has been a long awaiting problem to somehow relieve the burden that is put on the balancing markets because balancing markets and getting reserves from balancing markets is always expensive. There have been many researches conducted in the previous years. Uh, here on the slide, you can see a picture taken from one of these researches by uh, Yinku and his colleagues. We have identified a couple of problems and a couple of barriers that are leading us to a real liquid and a real functional intraday market. And uh, as you can see on the picture on the top right corner, we have different barriers that are preventing us from operating the intraday market in a liquid manner. Now, out of those many possibilities, our proposal have originally decided to choose the following. We wanted to develop and demonstrate a new intraday platform with continuous trading. So instead of using auctions, we have decided to move with continuous trading. And we wanted to increase the liquidity of the intraday market, thus removing the burden from the balancing system. And uh, this is what we would like to demonstrate during uh, this project and this demonstration period. From this motivation, we have delivered the objectives for this work package. The first objective was to demonstrate this new marketplace and also the new business models, including all those that have been developed by other work packages of the project, work package free, and also the market algorithm that was developed under Work Package 4. The second objective was to test and analyze this market design and this new clearing algorithm. And I would like to highlight that we were aiming for 
a day-to-day -day operation in parallel to the existing markets from the very beginning. And I believe this is one of the biggest advantages of this market. We're not only using simulation, but we're using data from the actual market that is uh, being used right now in Bulgaria and Cyprus. So we will really have a good comparison, something like an infield testing of our uh, solutions and of our algorithm. The third objective was to present the concept of new designs and to provide opportunity for market players to have some on-hand experience with these new market design and new products before actually those markets are going to introduce them. So for example, in the Bulgarian market, it is expected that uh, quarterly products and quarterly settlements will be introduced in the second half of this year, while the demonstration uh, is going to introduce those products for testing before the second half of this year. So all participants from Bulgaria will be able to test something in a demonstration environment that will be part of the regulation in the second part of this year. And last but not least, our fourth objective was to provide an insight for all the system operators who will be dealing with this kind of flexibility market in the future. They can have their experiences in the new market framework, and they can have their experiences with the new products and services that were developed and that are going to be tested during this demonstration. Some words about how complex the task was. First of all, as we have chosen to go with the continuous trading this task that we had to solve was uh, absolutely time critical. Continuous trading means that the order book has to be kept up to date in every second and practically every millisecond of the trading. If somebody, a volunteer or a participant of this market would like to submit a bid to this market, we have to go through the order book at this very exact moment and see whether this bid could be cleared or this should be placed in the order book. So from an algorithm perspective, the uh, issue was to be uh, as fast as possible and, of course, as efficient as possible, not only with the uh, matching procedure, but also with the handling of the order book. Also, considering the algorithm, certain requirements are written by the EuropeX organization, and uh, we have only highlighted one of them for this slide. They say that the algorithm shall be able to support non-standard products. And by non-standard, we all know that many of the markets in Europe are testing and developing uh, new types of products to be introduced in future markets. And uh, the matching algorithm that was developed during this first two years of the FlexiTransfer project has been designed to handle all those non-standard products that might come into force in the following years. So I can really say that uh, we have achieved really flexible tool in terms of the uh, matching. We were also aiming to introduce our own non-standard products and also uh, new orders have been designed for this demonstration. Considering the demonstration itself, we have introducing quarter hourly products. On both markets we currently have only hourly and 30-minute uh, products, so the time resolution will be improved. And we have designed two orders with smart functions. On one hand, uh, to simplify, as you can see, the bidding strategies. And on the other hand, to try to provide an opportunity for new entities to enter the market, namely demand response and energy storage technologies. The following two slides are taking uh, an insight into those two new order types what we have defined as volume constraint and cumulative volume constraint orders. A full description of these orders can be reached in a conference paper from last year. So if you are interested from a market design perspective, please let us know and then we can uh, share you also the background of this. For this meeting, what I would like to highlight that these types of orders are very similar to the exclusive block orders already being used in many of the markets. But we were changing the parameters in order to foster, again, the participation of demand side response and energy storage units. Both of the technologies which are uh, handled by the FlexiTrans tool project as key elements to the future flexible markets. The matching algorithm was designed 
as an intro AI algorithm to support the continuous matching, as I have previously mentioned. We started from creating a mathematical model, and then as we went further, we finally tested this under laboratory uh, circumstances using real market data from uh, the Bulgarian and the Hungarian market. So historical data was used to test the functionality of this IDM algorithm. We have already uh, implemented and integrated the bidding strategies for the two separate types of orders that were designed through the cumulative and the simple volume constrained orders. And we have also created a sandbox environment for this intraday algorithm in MATLAB so that uh, different settings could be tested. And of course, if during the project we see that certain, um, certain improvement could be achieved with the operation of the algorithm, this could be tested within the sandbox and only needs to be introduced into the demonstration platform after it has been running smoothly and uh, without any error. And finally, a few words about the architecture, which is the cornerstone of this project. What you can see here is only part of the flexible energy grid and the platform located to it, which is defined and uh, developed under the Flexi Transfer project. You will see uh, with green the parts that are actually used by not only one demonstrator, but more as well. And with blue, you can see the ones that are more specific to Rare Package 9 and the market demonstration. Starting from the left, you can see the first block, which is called the automated order source. And inside this box, you can see order conversion and order generation as two functionalities. The need for these elements in the whole architecture was that both the Cypriot and both the Bulgarian market are less major than some of the uh, Nordic and the Western European markets. And also the number of players on this market is limited. So in order to ensure that we are going to have a liquid market during the demonstration, we have defined these two functionalities. The order converter is going to receive the historical data, the bids that have been submitted to those markets, and going to convert them into the scenario that we're testing, while the order generator is going to behave like an artificial bidder, and based on the actual prices and the actual settings of the market, is going to provide fictitious bids for the market, so in order to ensure the liquidity of this market. The central piece of the picture shows you what we call the market demo application. This uh, functionality includes the order book manager and the matching algorithm, which are again continuously exchanging data in between them so that you can provide this continuous matching functionality. And also the results of the trading are going to be analyzed. And this analysis is going to be uh, published for all the participants so they can see the effect of uh, various orders and various products that are already available on the platform. You can see, for example, how the number of participants have affected the trading, et cetera, et cetera. And if you move to the right side, you can see that we have introduced a web interface to this project. This is what my colleagues are going to show you later on. I have highlighted with blue uh, the people who are actually you, who are the volunteers we're looking for, because our aim originally with this demonstration was not only to provide the testing for the 26 consortium members, but also for all other companies and entities who are either operating on the Bulgarian and the Cypriot market, or who are interested in testing, for example, these new basket orders or who would like to test, for example, their capabilities considering the continuous trading, which is again might be new to many of those who are in the call. I also have to highlight that after the demonstration period has been conducted and the project has been finished, the functionalities will be offered online for all of the potential future users of this FAG platform and this FAG architecture, which means that if you upload your market data, if you upload weather information, for example, you will be able to conduct testing 
you will be able to replicate certain scenarios or even some of the power system and your market, which means that again, it could be a very valuable tool, not only for the actual operation of the power system, but also for training and education of your professionals. A few words about the timing, the general timing of the demonstration. As I have mentioned, we're going to work with actual market data, but this is going to be historical market data, which means in order to achieve that none of these data will be harmed, and of course, none of the actual market participants are going to experience anything bad, we have decided to have a one week delay compared to live market, which means that actually, when uh, you're listening to this call on the 23rd of April, the platform currently is using the data from the 16th of April, but this is actual historical data that is being uploaded to this demonstration. During all the scenarios, we're going to set a certain parameter set. For example, we're going to define the installed capacity of renewable, renewable energy producers on this market. These scenarios are designed to have some saying on the future of those two markets in Bulgaria and Cyprus. So we're going to increase, for example, the volume of renewable energy being sold. We're going to increase the number of participants on the market. And as mentioned previously, we will introduce new players into the market storage and demand response. But during each of the scenarios, these parameters are not going to be changed. All of those scenarios are going to be broken down to what we call a turn, or actually two turns. The first turn of each scenario is going to be the age turn or hourly turn, and we will keep the actual market settings, so only the currently available order types and products are going to be allowed for testing. And then for the second part of the scenario, what we call the X turn, we're going to open up the product bullets not only with the two order types that have been shown previously, but other ones like, for example, iceberg orders, fill or kill, et cetera. And we're also going to introduce the quarterly products to this platform. So functionality and time resolution of the demonstration markets are going to be changed for the second part of each scenario. The demonstration will be started on the 4th of May and it will finish by the end of February next year. Considering the scenarios, we have six of them, or five plus one, as we usually call them. We will have a base case for summer and winter. We will actually start with the base case for summer, and we will almost end with the base case for winter. In these two scenarios, we will try to keep the parameters of the scenario as close to the actual market settings as they are currently in Bulgaria and Cyprus. And we will only increase the liquidity so that we can test the behavior of the matching algorithm. The other three scenarios are including either more demand response players, more renewable energy, or more storage in the market. So not only uh, the new order types could be tested under a normal environment, but also we are going to check what happens if we really introduce those types of players and those bidding strategies that could exploit these kind of new orders. We will hopefully see promising results from that. And the last scenario, the sixth one, is called weather. This is going to use the data that has been recorded during the previous five scenarios. And we will try to look for extreme weather events that somehow affected the operation of the market. For example, uh, large rampings in either wind or solar production, unexpected storms, maybe icing of the lines. So anything that could happen and cause something that was unexpected in the power system. In this scenario, we're going to replicate those events and we'll try to uh, provide a testing environment for the market operators and for the transmission system operators as well, how they could survive, or how they could achieve better under those extreme conditions. So those would be the five plus one scenarios for the demonstration. 
And now I would like to give the floor to uh, European Dynamics and especially uh, my colleague Nikos Bilidis. And they are going to show you the market platform. As you can see, it could be reached on this uh, web address, but all this information is going to be shared with you after the call. So I have made uh, Nikos the presenter and the floor is yours. Hello, thank you, Balin. Uh, hello from my side as well. I'm uh, Nikos Bilidis. Uh, I work for uh, European Dynamics. Uh, as it has been said, we are coordinating this uh, project. And I would like to say also a few words uh, about the project in general and uh, uh, the market platform that uh, we have developed. And uh, after that, uh, I will also perform uh, a live demonstration so that uh, all of you can see the main functionalities and uh, how it can be operated. Uh, so within the scope of the project, we have developed this uh, market platform uh, for the trading of flexibility. And in order to host the matching algorithm, the, this novel matching algorithm that has been developed by our colleagues at uh, BME, uh, of course, the project is, uh, as Balint has already said, uh, is wider than that. Uh, we are creating a toolbox of applications that uh, is going to aid the operation of the power system, uh, especially uh, the transmission system. Uh, however, we are attaching to other actors as well, like uh, distribution system operators and market operators. Uh, all of the demos, uh, are demonstrating solutions that could uh, increase the flexibility of the grid, uh, leading to uh, leading uh, to increased renewable penetration, while at uh, the same time uh, ensuring a reliable, stable, and secure operation. Uh, all these solutions come together through this toolbox that we are developing, which is called uh, the FEG platform. Uh, FEC uh, stands for Flexible Energy Grid, and uh, the platform will host the applications uh, that, uh, by adopting a unified strategy and facilitating information exchange in uh, a standardized way. Uh, this data exchange will facilitate transparency in the power system, enabling the collaboration between actors, uh, while at the same time fostering interoperability. And uh, finally, within this context, we will be able to support the communication between actors and integrate them in the platform in a plug and play concept uh, to the extent that this is possible. Um, the market uh, that uh, we are discussing today is uh, going to be a part of the solution. It uh, will enable the trading of flexibility services and showcase the operation of an intraday market for flexibility. Uh, the platform has uh, a strong research focus as it is going to be a test bed for the various ways of flexibility trading and for the evaluation of different business models. Uh, nevertheless, it is going to have also a strong exploitation potential uh, as it can operate as uh, a commercial platform as well. Uh, for the purposes, uh, actually, let me connect to start uh, the demonstration. Okay, uh, I have now connected to what we call the fake platform. This is not only uh, market specific, uh, but it is going to host all uh, the demos that uh, we have in, uh, in our project. Uh, so uh, I'm going to show some modules that we have developed to support, all, which can also support uh, the market operation. Uh, as we have said, uh, there are going to be uh, actual participants in uh, this marketplace, but uh, due to the limited number and because we cannot guarantee uh, a maximum liquidity, we will uh, be generating some uh, orders as well. This is going, as Balin said, this is going to be based on uh, actual market data and uh, the users will be able to upload those data throughout our platform, which connects all the users. 
Um, and uh, the platform allows the secure and uh, safe exchange of uh, data because uh, it, uh, it supports uh, uh, en safe encryption. Uh, from uh, this uh, screen, uh, users will be able to upload data uh, and uh, so that everybody who is connected and has access can see them. Uh, however, in order to access uh, this uh, page, in order to upload data, you have to be an administrator of the system. You have to have this uh, fake platform installed locally. Uh, this is not the case for the market participants who will be only able to access the market. Uh, but uh, I'm showing a few things about uh, the bank, the background. Uh, in order to understand how everything works. So uh, whenever someone uploads the data, uh, this will be transferred and shared between the users that belong in uh, the same user group and uh, actually have the, uh, the permission to view this uh, data set. And one, once uh, this is... Um, uh, the data have been uh, transferred. Uh, the administrator will be able to load the data to the order generator in order to uh, in order to be able to uh, produce uh, the the virtual orders that we are going to be feeding the market. So if I go to the import section, uh, you see that we can upload. We have the options of uploading files and uh, also. Uh, files about the market data and also about the weather data. Uh, the platform offers some more tools uh, for uh, the generation of data in order to make the orders more, the orders that are generated more com controllable and also to uh, be able to evaluate uh, the data that uh, are uploaded. We offer uh, also a, a module for, uh, to present the statistics of the market and um, maybe it's time to log in. Uh, I will log in as a regular user now to start demonstrating uh, the actual market platform. So whenever a participant uh, logs in into the market, uh, this is the main screen that appears. Uh, we try to make it as uh, functional as possible to gather everything in one screen to increase the uh, ease of, the ease of use. And uh, so on uh, the top left, you see the main screen of the market where all the products that are open uh, can be viewed. Uh, actually, the products open every day uh, for the next day. So at four o'clock today, the products for the next day will be opened and the users will be able to start bidding. Uh, the bidding is continuous, uh, the trading is continuous and uh, the products are closing one hour before delivery. So here we can see uh, for each product, uh, what time it closes, uh, what time the delivery starts, the delivery period, uh, because we, we, as Balin said, we are supporting hourly, quarter hourly products and uh, basket orders. And uh, next to each product, we can see some of the bids that have been play, already placed on uh, for this specific product. So uh, if uh, in, in this case, we see the most, the the bid that is on top in the order list. But if we want to see all the bids that have been placed for a specific product, we can click on the product and then in the screen on the right, we can see all the bids that have been placed uh, for uh, this product. Uh, the bids come with a quantity and the price and uh, we have different screens, different columns to uh, show the bids uh, for buying uh, energy and for selling. Uh, in uh, the screen that is on the bottom left, uh, we can see all the orders that have been placed by this specific user. So all the orders that I have placed through this account are uh, 
demonstrated here and uh, we have like a history of all the orders because we can see for each order uh, which product uh, to which product each order is related uh, what is the status if it's still active on the market if it has been matched if it uh, has expired without being matched uh, the type of uh, the bid if it's for selling or for buying uh, the price, the quantity, the time that the delivery starts, the delivery period, and some other details. Uh, so this acts as a complete history. Uh, we can change the screen to see only the trades, so only the bids that have been matched, and that have been inserted by this account and have been matched. Uh, Sorry, uh, the old trade screen shows all the trades that have been uh, um, that have been uh, that have taken place in the market, uh, respective of the user. Uh, for transparent, for privacy reasons, we only uh, mention the country of the buyer and the seller, and not uh, we do not disclose more information. In the my trades, we can see, uh, as I said before, the trades that uh, have been. Uh, Put placed in the market by this specific user. And finally, uh, as Balin said, since we are supporting also basket orders, we have a, a screen in order to view the basket orders before placing. So uh, finally, in the bottom right screen, we can see some weather data uh, which can be of help uh, to the user when playing in the market. On the first row, we always see the current uh, measurements. Uh, so we have the temperature, the sun radiation, the wind speed, and some uh, info regarding the clouds and the sky coverage. And uh, the next row show the, the weather prediction for the following hours. Um, now, uh, as we said, this demonstration will run in uh, two countries in Cyprus and Bulgaria, so the user can switch between the two markets and see what is happening in both markets. Uh, again, this is a matter of, uh, uh, of access. Uh, we can control who, which user sees which market and uh, which user can play in which market. So some users will only be able to see one of the two markets or both and uh, play in one or both markets. Um, <clears throat> uh, as you can see here, we have some functionalities in order to filter out the trades. We can uh, select some specific dates uh, in order to see uh, the data, the relevant data. Um, and also we have uh, the, uh, the option of exporting this whole table into a CSV file for uh, further editing. <clears throat> um, okay, so maybe uh, it's, it would be a good point now to show, to give some examples uh, by of how we can play in the market. Um, for example, I what I see in the top left screen, as I said, are all the open products uh, from Actually, it's uh, we can see the products up until uh, for this day and also for the next day, uh, and we can see both hourly and quarter hourly products. Although this will be uh, changing according to the scenario, as Balin described earlier, some pro some uh, in some scenario in some terms of the scenario we will only be including hourly products. In some others, also quarter hourly. Um, so if we select a product uh, for which we would like to bid, uh, we can uh, right click on the product and we have the place order option. Through this, we can select if it's a buy or a sell order. We can enter a price and the quantity and we can uh, choose the type of the order. This uh, market platform supports uh, limit orders. Iceberg orders, immediate or cancel, fill, fill or kill, uh, all or none, and basket orders. So just a simple example of placing a, a, a limit order. 
we can see that it appears and uh, if other users are logged in and are watching the screen also will be able to see that uh, the product has been placed. Uh, we can also, as I said, add uh, uh, basket orders for which uh, the functionality is a bit different as we have to gather many orders to put them uh, on the market simultaneously. So uh, to do that, we have uh, we have enabled the functionality. So when placing basket orders, uh, first of all, we can select the type of the basket order, if it's exclusive volume constraint uh, or cumulative volume constraint. And we can also select the maximum number of matched orders for which the basket can be valid. Uh, so let's, for example, let's create uh, a basket order and you can see that uh, now on the uh, on the bottom left uh, screen you can see uh, the the bid that I have placed which is still pending until I complete my basket and put everything uh, on the market so if I add more orders these are queued in uh, this window I can select different products and uh, put some more orders and when I'm done I can just play push uh, press this button and the whole basket uh, will appear on the markets at the same time um, so maybe I would uh, like to ask uh, my colleague Kostas Vasilakis to log in from another account and try to uh, hit some of the orders that uh, I have placed so that you can see how it actually works uh, live. Uh, so, Costa, maybe if you can access this product for uh, 14.15. Yes, uh, Nico. Um... And also place maybe a sell uh, bid with uh, half the quantity. Yes, as you can see, uh, Costas placed a bid uh, with a price that was uh, enough to match my buying price and half of the quantity. Um, so the quantity that uh, I'm seeing now is has been reduced. Nico, sorry, one thing. Uh, it's just for this to be shown there, you also need to set the date because not it's 22 of April. Okay, uh, and now you can see that I can also see uh, the trade that happened uh, in the screen of uh, my orders. Uh, it's, the, sorry, it's the fourth trade. If you see it's partly matched, it hasn't changed. It's below the basket, so it's the first one you placed. So it was 10 and 10, now it's 10 and 5, and it's partly matched. And if you go <laughs> on top of 5, the mouse, you can see the initial quantity if you hover the 5. Uh, to, to the right one, one cell to the right, and it was 10, now it's 5, if you want to have an overview of what happened. Okay, and also we have enabled this uh, feature of the show timeline, where we can see for each order that has been placed on the market, uh, what has actually happened. So it's a visual way to see better uh, the different uh, matches that have taken place uh, for each one of the bids that have been placed uh, on the market. Uh, this is useful for uh, further analysis uh, of uh, the market results. Uh, okay, Kosa, maybe uh, let's uh, match some other, some more of the bids. Uh, maybe you can. Uh, uh, put a bit, place a bit uh, for this one so that it covers all the quantity so that we can see that it will disappear when it is uh, totally matched. So it was placed, it disappeared, and now. The third order says matched on the bottom left um, uh, table. Uh, just to mention that uh, we cannot see, we don't see it uh, on the top because still we have some uh, of the basket orders that are active. So we see it right below that. 
but in any case, uh, you can see that uh, it operates as a usual market platform. Uh, you can place different kind of bids. You can place. Uh, you can uh, choose uh, the products that you are interested for, and we have we offer functionalities to see the whole history, uh, and we try to make it as uh, user friendly as possible. Um, I don't know, Costa. Is there anything else that uh, we can uh, show right now? Or... No, just to mention that yes, the orders uh, are uh, are ordered in the way they were put by the user, they were placed. But if you go to my trades, you will see the sorted result of all your trades. So in my trades, uh, you should be able to see all the trades we did now uh, ordered by the time you did them. Mm, yes, thank you. Because and also something something more. Uh, you can also see the notifications that uh, are placed. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, every time this time. Yes, yes, thank you. Uh, it's time that the uh, trade takes place. Uh, the user also receives a notification uh, to inform, to be informed about uh, the bid that was matched. Uh, so, in general, this is pretty much. Uh, I don't know if there are any questions. Balin, is it now the time for questions or? Uh, first, I suggest to uh, have the couple of final slides and then I'm going to open the floor. We have already okay. received some questions in the chat window. So if anybody has any questions, feel free to ask. Thank you, Nikos and Costas, for the demonstration of the platform. And as you can see, this will be available for you during the demonstration to use via this link. So finally, uh, again, we would like to draw your attention to this demonstration. We have highlighted three functionalities that could be used for market participants, but not only market participants, but also market operators and system operators are able to exploit uh, some of the knowledge that has been put into this demonstration previously. First of all, you can test those new basket orders that we have developed specifically for this demonstration and also the other ones that were mentioned by Nikos. You can also check and learn and train your stuff how to adjust your bidding strategy based on the accuracy of your weather forecasts because also weather information is uh, involved in this platform and you can see it on the display as well. And also, as I mentioned, one of the scenarios will be dealing with the extreme weather events. So for example, you would like to know how your system and how your procedures would react to unexpected events. This demonstration might give also some value for you as well. As it was mentioned previously, the demonstration will go online on the 4th of May, which is approximately in two weeks. And for that, we would like to uh, receive your response of interest, uh, preferably by the uh, beginning of next week, so that we will have enough time, of course, to create the accounts, and also you will have enough time to get familiar with the platform. I would also like to emphasize that you are able to join the demonstration as we proceed. So it is not a, a must to start from the very beginning. If you are interested in certain scenarios or certain turns, you will be also able to join later on. The schedule is not going to be modified. Hopefully we don't have any issues that may cause some delay or uh, restructuring. So for example, if your storage owner would like to test uh, the functionalities of new orders defined for storage, then you can also join just the scenario for storage as well. But of course, we would like to uh, have as many of you on board as possible from the very beginning, thus ensuring the liquidity of this market and also uh, the viability of this platform for this demonstration. And also, I would like to once again draw your attention to our whole project, the Flexi Transfer project, because as it was mentioned, this is only one of the eight demonstrators that are 
uh, ongoing right now in different parts of Europe, and uh, you will be able to find many important and interesting information about those demonstrators on our web page and of course on other social media pages. So uh, join us and also engage uh, with the project. And finally, I would like to open the floor for questions and I would start uh, with the one we have already received in the chat window. It was asked by uh, Nikos Savopoulos, if I pronounce correctly. Uh, he had two questions. The first one, is there a pre-qualification phase for the market participants? And if yes, what are the required indicators? Uh, my short answer is no, there is no pre-qualification phase. This is a demonstration, so we would like to make it as open as possible. Uh, even if you are not a market player currently, you will be able to test and use the platform. So there is no limitation from this perspective. And here's a second question was, does the market platform allows aggregators to participate in the market? My answer is yes. Uh, again, there is no restriction considering your actual uh, position or your actual uh, type of player being on the market, you're able, uh, of course, to, to join the demonstration if you're an aggregator. We also have a couple of uh, added values for aggregators as well, just like for generators and uh, different levels of operators as well. So you're uh, very welcome to, to join the platform. Any other questions if you have regarding the platform, regarding the demonstration? The floor is yours. Meanwhile, as you're thinking about your questions, again, I would like to highlight that this presentation and this training has been recorded and it will be uh, published. So you will be able to check on the details later on, especially if some of the functionalities were not clear at first sight. So you will have the opportunity and will also uh, send this information to all the participants that have joined this webinar. And course information will be also put on the website of the Flexi Transfer project. The second call for questions. If none, then I would like to once again thank you for joining us. It was uh, really a pleasure and honor to present to you uh, the results and uh, the actual uh, results of this demonstration and the project. And uh, once again, we would be very happy and honored if many of you could join the demonstration and help us and help the whole project uh, put out valuable results for uh, all ourselves in, in this project and also, of course, uh, participating in the European power markets. So thank you for attention. Thank you for joining. and. Uh, I wish you a nice afternoon to you. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.